I'm going to introduce Kieran Patel now, who uh, is well known to us as a region, a great friend of the region out in the Chinese market, and for a lot of the businesses that go between Leeds City Region and China. China. He's the Senior Director for China of the CBBC, the China Britain Business Council. And I'll hand over to Kieran now to chair the next panel and introduce the panelists. Thank you, Kieran. Thank you very much, David. Can you hear me well? Yes. Okay, great, excellent. Well, um, thank you all and um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's uh, uh, a real pleasure to be with you this, uh, this morning. I think it's still morning with you in the UK. It's uh, well into the evening here in China, so I'm uh, losing track of things. But uh, um, my name is Kieran Patel and I'm Senior Director based at the uh, China Britain Business Council um, in Beijing. Uh, we are the UK's National Trade Association based in Beijing with over 65 years um, working extensively between the UK and China to develop um, trade and investment links. I myself have been in China for 16 years and, uh, and uh, very recently <clears throat> I was delighted to, uh, to catch up with uh, David and, uh, and his team on their recent visit to China, which was the catalyst for, I guess, me getting involved in, uh, in this really exciting uh, event that we've, uh, that we've joined today. So on behalf of CBBC, it is indeed a real privilege uh, for, for, for me to be invited by the Leeds City Region Enterprise Partnership to get involved in this Leeds, um, Leeds Digital Festival and specifically in uh, the, the itinerary that we have ahead of us on the future of tech. I will provide some brief opening reflections before we embark on the panel discussion with three tech sector experts who will address building international tech partnerships and outreach from Leeds City Region. They are all shining examples of best practice and we are delighted to have for you in today's programme um, James Wang, Vice President and General Manager of the UK and Ireland at Dahua Technology. Hui Chuye, Director at TPP. Sarah Fawcett, Global Programme Manager, SBC at Farnell. They will share their journeys, global ambitions, and the incredible success that they are having trading across multiple platforms in international markets, while also sharing the impact that they're sharing back um, and bringing back, I should say, into uh, their local communities as well. Um, <clears throat> I will hand over to each of our panelists shortly to provide a five minute overview of their business and the innovative technologies that they are exporting before we break into our panel discussion format where <clears throat> in addition to questions from me, you will have an opportunity to raise questions to us directly or through the Q&A and you'll be able to do that through the chat box uh, at the bottom. Um, some brief housekeeping pointers before we get started. Um, I think um, the administrators already turned off your cameras and put your microphones on mute. So, uh, so, so well done, uh, Jenny um, and uh, team. Um, you, you can input questions directly into the text box, as I mentioned at the bottom, and um, I will address these um, together with the panelists um, in, in the Q&A at the end of the session. Um, I should also say that <clears throat> my voice is going. I've had a, a few days in bed with the flu prior to today. So today is my first day, at, first day back at work. So do excuse me if I, uh, if I start to lose my voice um, as I get into uh, uh, my, uh, my short speech ahead. Um, I'll, I'll just pause and grab some water if, uh, if needed. But uh, okay, so, so just to kick things off, I'll, I'll, I'll now just take a few moments to set the scene for, for today's discussion. So the COVID-19 pandemic has of course presented us all with uh, a unique, challenging set of circumstances to, main, uh, to maintain the flow of trade um, and our international partnerships. With COVID-19 uh, really necessitating rapid digital transformation throughout business models, embracing tech in all forms is pivotal, is pivotal to building a sustainable and future-proofed business. We at the China Britain Business Council 
have also had to evolve how we work with our membership body and to embed digital throughout, um, uh, th throughout our work. So offering, um, for example, digital AI driven trade platforms for UK companies to engage with the China market while they haven't been able to, to travel out here um, and form delegations. Um, taking our China Britain business focus entirely online from a, from a magazine into a fully fledged digital portal, which we are now positioning as the resource on, uh, on UK China news. And you know, there is a tech and innovation section within our um, focus platform. And I'm really, really keen to reach out to um, all of you that, that have um, interesting stories and insights that you'd like to share about your work uh, with China, between China and the UK on that. Uh, we've also, as uh, the Leeds Digital Festival today, um, uh, been a great example of uh, Leeds City Region Enterprise Partnership, um, adopting a digital by default approach at a time where digital engagement is absolutely essential. You know, we've, we've also very much taken the service and support that we provide to our members and partners uh, into the Digisphere. So, uh, so, so I must say a big credit to, to the team at uh, um, the Lead City Region Enterprise Partnership for, for bringing together this, uh, this program uh, today and, uh, you know, confidently uh, and, and, and elegantly bringing together a, a really, really strong range of uh, speakers and, uh, and, and content. So I'll just say a few quick words um, on um, the, the, the assets of China and the UK within the sector. Um, I mean, just, just uh, to, to kick off, China is the UK's third largest export market for goods and is our third largest trading partner. We received the lion's share of Chinese investment into Europe, which equates to more than 44 billion since the start of the century, and 10.1 billion um, of that was invested into UK tech companies in 2019. Um, which is behind only the US and China and raising more than France and Germany combined. That's a, a very strong performance for the UK um, tech sector as a, as a segment of, uh, of overall Chinese inbound investment into, uh, in, into Europe as a whole. Um, as the first major global economy to re-emerge into growth after COVID-19, China therefore must be and is at the forefront of our attention. China has rapidly become home to dynamic digital innovators and is a leading global investor in the latest technologies. It has also become a world leader in harnessing new and transformative technologies, including big data, artificial intelligence, machine learning, the whole internet of things um, sphere, 5G, as, as we all know, and has been well documented, um, and high performance computing. This has all happened relatively recently, evidenced by the fact that only 25% of Chinese uh, citizens were actually um, actively using the internet in 2013. However, yet by January 2020, penetration has risen to well over um, 59%, or in real terms, 854.5 million users. This continued to grow 3.1% throughout 2019. <coughs> and has revolutionized how tech is shaping behavior in the world's largest consumer market. In the previous panel, we talked uh, a little bit about how, uh, you know, on a day-to-day on a -day, um, basis, um, technology has, uh, has revolutionized uh, and given us a digital citizenship. And, um, you know, in terms of the, 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 the cons consumer behavior, um, this is a, 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 a real, um, a, a real visible example of impact. I mean, we had a very thorough and engaging review um, of the e-commerce landscape from David Lloyd at Alibaba also this uh, earlier today, uh, which I'll just reinforce quickly with some further stats. Um, so in 2019, China recorded a total online sales of um, 10.63 trillion renminbi and significant developments in social commerce, live streaming e-commerce, and cross-border e-commerce have made it a much more sophisticated and dynamic marketplace for market entry and brand expansion. Total sales on all of China's e-commerce platforms during the 2019 Singles Day promotional event on the 11th of November 
absolutely smashed previous records, reaching um, 410 billion B, which was a 31% um, increase on 2018. Um, Taobao live streaming alone generated approximately 20 billion RMB in sales on Singles Day in 2019. So we can so we can see just how much the evolution of um, tech is uh, is shaping the way that Chinese consumers engage with brands and uh, and put their hands in their in their digital pockets. Um, <clears throat> China is one of the world's leading investors in AI technology and. That therefore, there are significant opportunities for UK companies to take advantage of uh, within the sector. Um, these um, <clears throat> electronic and autonomous vehicles also receive strong government support, and uh, there is a mission that by 2030, all vehicles in China will be electric vehicles. While in Beijing alone, there are over 50 roads currently being used in uh, autonomous driving pilot programs. Um, We've also heard very recently uh, uh, President Xi Jinping's speech about bringing a, a, a completely carbon uh, neutral footprint to China within a very, very aggressive timeline. Uh, the ambition uh, is, uh, is phenomenal. I mean, these successes, in addition to China's development goals, will also lead to more commercial opportunities for the UK tech sector and firms um, across a number of industries to capitalize in. And therefore, <coughs> excuse me, it's great to have um, three such companies with us um, today that um, showcase the very best <coughs> of that partnership in action. Just excuse me for one second. I should also just very briefly say a few words <coughs> about um, the UK strengths. Um, and the UK shares a high level of complementarity with China within the field of tech and should be prepared to present itself with confidence internationally. Um, the UK has the third largest digital sector in the world, which means that we are a global technology leader with state-of-the-art capabilities and resources to stay ahead of the curve. The UK's strength in tech innovation is driven by a strong talent pool, world-leading universities, with Oxford Cambridge, Imperial College London, and UCL being particularly prominent in the technology field, and the ease of access to venture capital funding that promotes early stage innovation. <coughs> <coughs> technology, however, currently accounts for a small proportion of UK exports, and only a small proportion of these go to China. There are various reasons for this, um, of which high regulatory barriers cultural differences in doing business and navigating market entry to established presence are, are but three. That is perhaps the ideal segue from my opening remarks, which I apologize have been uh, inhibited somewhat by my sore throat, um, to hand over and segue into um, our speakers today, who, as I said, all represent companies that have made real tangible success with their international engagement and have a track record that can inspire all of us to take our businesses beyond borders and to further accelerate growth in market. I'm therefore delighted to introduce our first speaker today. Um, and um, I'm gonna turn straight to James Wang, Vice President and General Manager, UK and Ireland from Daha Technology, who will share their story with you. Over to you, James, and, um, and thank you all for listening. I hope I didn't speak for too long. Thank you. Go ahead, James. All right. First of all, sorry, I need to apologize. I'm not James. Uh, like I say, Kira, thank you very much for your, for your kindness introduction. Uh, my name is Sean He. Uh, unfortunately, James have got uh, another meeting with some of the senior management level within the business. So unfortunately, he couldn't make it. He wants me to pass on his uh, apologize in regards to his absence so in in a very very short period as you probably can imagine uh, i have been told um, i'm taking his place so just a quick very very quick introduction about myself like say my name is shong he uh, i'm the sales director for that way uk and island and i've been with the company for just over eight months so it's my honor obviously to be here with you guys 
and to you know take part on behalf of James uh, in in the search. So here we go, and uh, I think moving forward, I'm gonna take the path. I'm gonna participate uh, on James' absence, and the staff gave you guys a little bit of introduction about that way UK and Ireland, and that way that way technology UK and Ireland. Just bear with me for two seconds. Let's get this to work. Okay, can everyone see my screen okay? Oh? Yep. Yep. Yes, excellent. we can. Thank you, Sean. Right, right. excellent. Right, like so first of all, obviously on behalf of Jim, so I'd like to thank you guys to invite Tawa to the great event. I have heard the fantastic things and I'm delighted to be part of it. And for people who don't know Tawa, I would like to do a first to give a brief introduction of who we are and what we do. Okay, so Datwa Technology is a world-leading video-centric smart IoT solution and service provider with more than 16,000 employees and over 50, 000, sorry, over 50 percent engaged in R&D. We have solutions, products, and the services applied in 180 countries and the regions. And we established 53 overseas subsidiaries and the representative offices covers the Asian Pacific, North America, Europe, Africa, and other regions. This enables us to provide customers with speedy and high quality services. That what technology has developed itself to technolo technological innovation since its inspiration and we continuously increase investment in R&D, putting around 10% of our annual sales revenue into this. Our company has five research institutes, the Advanced Technology Institute, Big Data Institute, Central, in Central Institute, Network Security Institute, and the Smart City Institute. Our products and the solutions are widely used in key areas such as public security, finance, transportation, energy, and the communication. We have participated in major projects such as the Rio Olympics Games, the G20 Hangzhou Summit, the China International Import Export, among this many more. In the UK, we focus on vertical markets such as education, safe cities, finance, transport, retail, and etc. We are involved with Sif City's project in Lincoln City, have upgraded the Liverpool Airport CCTV systems, and we're currently working with the upgrade of the M4 motorway. These are just a few of the success projects that that way is delivering, and we are, and there are many, many more. Okay. For the UK and Ireland part, uh, Data Technology started to serve UK and Ireland market since 2007. In 2015, we established the Data UK office and become a subsidiary in 2016. We have located, sorry, we have located in Maidenhead and it covers the UK and Ireland market. In the UK, we currently have eight distributor partners and several OEM strategic cooperation partners. We gather a team of more than 70 colleagues in the UK, with over half being locally employed staff, providing high quality services, including sales, marketing, technical support, etc., for our customers and the partners. In 2018, I think it's more relevant to this, we created our secondary office in Leeds, and we're basically based in Wet Rural Centre, that's where I'm at at this moment. We're currently looking at the options for expanding the Leeds office due to the business growth as well. Okay. Uh, today, oh, sorry. Today's topic is the future of technology, starting with artificial intelligence and the internet 
of things. AIoT is a combination. Basically, AIoT is basically the combination of artificial intelligence and Internet of Things, where connect devices meet human intelligence. This is enabling ultimate possibilities through the integration of connected devices and security solutions. Oh, jumping. Okay, with a continuous irritation of information technology, technological innovation promotes the transformation of digital ceremony to the intelligence economy area and our heart of city strategy we continuously build our core competence around digital twins and intelligence twins supports the business as a leader data as a function technology as a tool philosophy and solidifying the new driving focus of closed loop customer value. We have a long history of develop AI in DARPA. We formed our first AI team back into 2006, launched intelligence transportation all-in-one camera in 2007, and become the standards of e-police in China. We established the first post-doctorate office in China back into 2010, starting deep learning technology pre-research in 2012, deployed AI training clutches, become fully industrialized in 2017. We released the G platform in last year, accelerating the expansion of smart industry. Looking at the future, we see infinity possibilities. And obviously that's just basically the pathway in DARPA uh, as a company. Okay. So in R&D, we have AI end-to-end R&D full link from basic ability such as programming, platform, development to core algorithm, use 4D plus algorithms, to industry algorithms. We have 100 plus industry scenarios algorithm available, then to the full product coverage, then to smart solutions. We are actively building leading core algorithms capabilities such as virtual intelligence, 3D intelligence, multi-dimensional intelligence and the control intelligence. These capabilities will make a significant and positive contribute to the way we work, live, learn and play. 2020 has been a challenging year for all of us because of COVID, as I think Kara has mentioned before. The COVID-19 crisis has dramatically affected the public health in every country in the world and sh sharp concentrates in economics activities has been accomp accompanied as a growing number of business and organizations seek a return of operation following the lo lockdown and the dispute link with the COVID-19 pandemic. Technology has a role to play where it does not offer a silver bullet for the problems faced, it can help with compliance issues during a return of some degree of normality. In response to these challenges for adapting the new normal, we combined our AI technology and the thermal detection technology together offer helps as we return a new normal. A part of, sorry, apart from technology, social responsibilities is a critical importance to us. Work with and contributing to local society is one of our key value to that with technology. We have recently raised thousands for NHS charity with a thermal monitoring scheme, and we are keen to contribute more. As I draw a close, Hope my speech gave you a brief idea of future technology from my perspective. 
and hope you enjoyed it. Lastly, I would like to invite all of you to our UK office, and for probably for you guys, the the Leeds office will be more convenient. And like say, and hopefully see you guys very very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sean, and uh, and kudos for stepping in at such short notice and giving such a, a coherent presentation um, on um, Dahua technology. Um, I mean, I, I should also, um, I, I, I guess, on behalf of um, our hosts today um, from 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 Leeds, also, you know, thank you for your commitment um, and uh, and and sustained uh, investment into uh, into the region. And you know, we're delighted that we that you see it as a as a key enabler for uh, for your strategy, both within the UK and across Europe. Um, I mean, a slightly um, off piece comment here. Uh, I I couldn't help but uh, detect a, a very unique accent there, Sean. I mean, uh, I'm I'm trying to uh, pick up where you may have spent time in the UK. Certainly, north of England. Yes, that's right. And uh, right, I live in I live in Middlesbrough at this moment, but I did go to. Uh, Northumbria University, which is based in Newcastle. Right, yeah, no, I, I was thinking that there's a hint of Geordie in there, but as you said, um, Middlesbrough, I might get into trouble if I, <laughs> if I inferred Newcastle. Um, it, it's all right, I, I, neither, <laughs> I, I support neither of the teams, and uh, I'm, I'm class myself as a Mackham, so I, my team is Sunderland's. Ah, I'm not sure well. if, it's a, if it's a great thing to say at this moment, but yeah. We'll we we draw we close on that one. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Um, right, no problem. And, um, okay. Well, um, getting back on on track, I'm now going to uh, to, to hand over to to Hui Chu from uh, from TPP, who's going to uh, to to present to you um, the, the the story of TPP and their international engagement. So. Um, so uh, Hui Chen is director at uh, at TPP, and uh, she will uh, she will now run through um, their story with you. Over to you. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen as well. Um, cool. I think it's working now. Cool. So hello everyone, uh, it's nice to meet you all here. And my name is Hui Chi and I'm director of Asia Pacific from TPP. TPP is a leads based digital health company that has been operating in the NHS for 23 years and internationally for the last six years. Uh, we now have business and offices in China, Middle East, British Virgin Islands, and we are very active in Africa and Southeast Asia as well. Um, oh. Oh. Um, at TPP, we are best known for three key areas, um, electronic health records, patient applicants, research and analytics. TPP software solutions are cloud-based and we operate software as a system model. And this approach in, ensures no local service required for individual hospitals or clinics. We also have a secondary data center, which ensures zero data loss for our users. Uh, our tech team monitors the connectivity of data center 24 seven, making sure the system availability 100% all the time. We supply standard APIs to support integration with third party. We have a single version system and update the system globally every four weeks. Uh, the release cycle means users would have, they can always use the latest version of the systems. When our, when our CEO started the company 23 years ago, he had the ambition to write the software that would join up healthcare records for patients across different care settings. This, that means wherever a patient presents for care, therefore records is available for the clinicians treating them to review, to view. This software is now used across the NHS in primary care, hospitals, mental health, care home, and, and more. So through our, through our patient app, 
we give citizens access to their record and enable them to add to add to it through wearable device integrations and links to other data sources such as pollution tracking these different modules have tailored functionality to support each care worker perform their daily job but with that single electronic health record always available we we have now over 200,000 users assessing this record across 7,000 different NHS organizations and benefiting from that single source of truth right across the UK. Uh, we are now operating one of the largest databases of any kind in the world, 51 million unique patient records on one single instance. We perform more transactions a day than London Stock Exchange, and our software has to be available 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Um, given the sen sensitive nature of the healthcare data, we have to ensure the system is fast and responsive. Um, when you are a doctor giving care to a patient, you need the IT that makes your job easier that you can rely on. So we ensure that the doctor always have the full patient record available at the click of a button. Our average for a full patient record retrieve, the largest function we perform is just 12 milliseconds. With data of this size, scale and quality, we are also in a unique position of being able to develop advanced AI algorithm that we can put back into the clinical system. For complex conditions that are hard to spot, such as variant cancer, we can, we can build algorithms to de detect early stage cancer and save lives by putting this in the hands of patients and having them sit alongside the doctor in a consultation. So in the UK, our work on variant cancer has resulted in our algorithm being able to spot variant cancer before the doctor in 50% of cases. Um, we can improve the management of long-term conditions such as diabetes and hypertension by providing citizens with personalized targets and advice through deep learning algorithms designed to prevent the onset of complications caused by diabetes getting out of control. The value of AI is not just help patients assess the best possible care, there's also great potential to save costs of the healthcare service. Um, by using data to predict when a patient may present in hospital to spot complex patients, as soon as they walk through the door, we can change the way care is delivered inside a hospital. Patient can then enter their symptoms at home and we can use this data to signpost them to the most appropriate care facility and prepare that facility by sharing the online diagnosis and symptoms the patient has entered. By in implementing technology that genuinely supports the idea of integrated care and we can achieve immediate benefit through making vital data available instantly. So, so here, um, I would like to finish my presentation by sharing with you what we have been working on uh, to help with COVID with our rich health records. The strength of the UK is the data that is recorded in primary care IT system, thanks to our GP system. So back in March, we started to use the data held in our database to create a COVID-19 linked data set. So for example, the Open Safely platform, there are three key, key things here. Tw uh, 24 million linked health records, evaluation of risk factors associate, associated with COVID-19 poor outcome, collaboration between academics, software engineers, policy makers, and, and, and more. This demonstrate the power of reliable clinical data recorded across the healthcare system. The data, um, sorry, the data that was 
combined in the open safely platform I just mentioned, um, produce papers that were recognized by the leading research institutions. The research finding can enable us to make better decisions and make us think which patients may be at most risk, what are the lifestyle factors that may contribute to poor COVID-19 outcomes, and how can we better protect vulnerable groups from COVID-19 infections. So that, like my colleagues and entire office, we are really busy to, to support NHS at the moment. Um, so that, that's all I would like to share with the team today. Hope this is helpful. Thank you very much, Hui uh, Chu, for, uh, for, for the presentation. And uh, I should actually use this um, opportunity while we're on air to also congratulate TPP on your uh, nomination into the finalists of the British Exporter of the Year Award, which um, uh, is an award category that the um, China Britain Business Council created um, within the British Business Awards, which, uh, which are being run by the British Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai. I'm sure you're aware of the uh, of the um, the process that you've gone through to get to to, to that phase. And uh, you know, I, I I wish you um, all the best with the with the outcome um, of that um, towards the end of um, uh, this month. Um, upon which uh, at the gala in Shanghai, which uh, I don't think you'll be able to attend in person. I probably won't be attending, but I really want um, to be there. <laughs> Yes, um, but, um, but, but, but yeah, you know, um, all the very best. And I think that's a testament to, um, to a lot of the, the great work that you've, um, that you've showcased throughout your, your, your presentation now and, uh, and throughout the Q&A, we, uh, we will aim to dive, um, dive a bit deeper into the impact that uh, TPP is having within, uh, within the uh, life sciences sector. So th thank you very much, Hui uh, Chu. Last but, uh, but not least today, um, we have Sarah Forsett with us, um, who is Global Programme um, Manager at um, Farnell. So uh, without much ado, Sarah, um, I'm going to uh, give control to you, to you and, uh, and look forward now to your, uh, to your presentation, your overview on, uh, on the work that you've been doing internationally with Farnell, which uh, I understand from our um, orientation session last week has a, a, phenomenal, a phenomenally long history and track record um, as a business that, that, that I myself, you know, was found quite enlightening. So, okay, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to hand over to you and uh, um, it's, it's your time. Thanks, Kieran. Um... So, so as Kieran says, I'm Sarah Fawcett, I'm from Farnell, um, and I'll just share with you my screen. Um, can you see that okay, everyone? Let me just... Uh... Yep, we can see it, if we can get it full screen. Does that look okay? It's, yep, that, that's fine. Sure. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, so, as I said, I'm Sarah Fawcett. And I am <clears throat> the leader of the single board computing business for Farnell. And Farnell um, is a global electronics distributor, but we actually distribute um, electronics all over the world. Um, we're a high service distributor, which means we operate in multiple different countries. And um, we are a major employer of Leeds. Farnell's a global business, so you might not have heard of the Farnell brand name in your local region. Um, so customers in Asia Pacific will know us as Element 14. Um, and customers in North America will know us as Newark. And we've got various different operating brand names through 100 years of operation, we've acquired multiple different uh, companies, uh, but we've maintained that relationship with our brands in the local regions. And our aim is to service the mass market by prov providing a differentiated product technology offering. And what that means is we're, we're purchasing on license technology from, from suppliers and distributing that globally across the world. And 
we want to deliver to our to the market our customer base a market leading service so what, what do i mean by service i mean the best price i mean next day delivery i mean a high quality of choice i mean a depth of inventory that our customers rely on and depend on for their manufacturing needs or their uh, future sales needs um, so we're a 1.5 billion dollar company today and um, as I said we've got over 3,000 employees and our vision is to become the distributor which is the best in class um, Farnell is wholly owned by Avnet so you may have heard of Avnet they are a Fortune 500 company and also a global leader in electronics components and services. Um, they guide makers and manufacturers from design to delivery and they have a long standing, they were founded in 1921 um, and they have an annual revenue of $18 billion. So what do I specifically do in this? Um, I manage the Singapore computing product and supplier area and um, the Singapore computing team and I manage over 50 different technology suppliers and brands and we distribute their products globally all over the world. Um, you can see the picture on the right hand side of the slide there, um, that's a Raspberry Pi um, and if you don't know what a Raspberry Pi is <laughs> It's one of the most iconic brands of Singapore computer that you could buy today. And um, it's a bare bones, high tech, low cost computer, which you can use as a desktop PC. Um, we have license to manufacture and distribute this product globally. And we have a licensing agreement with the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And uh, this is the product that's front and center of our of our whole SPC business within Farnell and uh, this is a product that we manufacture in both the UK and South Wales and we manufacture in Shenzhen as well um, and we then export regionally um, from the UK to Europe and America and then regionally from China to the rest of Asia Pacific You can see on the bottom of the slide there with some of the other brands that we work with, like the Microbit, um, which is, as I'll go into shortly, the BeagleBoard, um, Arduino, and we've got some own brand products, which are from Multicomp Pro and Avnet as well. So just a far now in numbers. Um, we have an impressive set of statistics, which you can see on the screen with a huge number of active customers um, and a huge online community of design engineers, uh, something we're particularly proud of. Um, and the majority of our business is online. We're an online e-commerce business with 70 odd percent of our business traded from our platform online, farnell.com or uric.com. Um, but just a bit more de detail about our engineering community it's the element 14 community so it's a online industry standard community for electronics collaboration and we use this community and um, users can share ideas on this community and there's lots of information on the latest electronics trends such as iot such as wireless uh, such as ai ml you know all the topics that kieran discussed earlier um, and one of the biggest platforms that people use to create and solve problems with the hardware platforms is the Raspberry Pi. And that's kind of the, the tenuous link to all this. Um, and we recently conducted an IoT survey across our entire membership of our Element 14 members. And that survey showed that 50% um, of design engineers who are members on this site are using Singapore computers to, for, to complete their designs and to use them to embed into their systems and platforms. And Raspberry Pi is one of the most preferred platforms due to its really small footprint, um, its ecosystem of support online, 
and its ease of development and its simplicity. So what's Farnell doing to, to grow and what's our vision? Um, I'll just very quickly run through this slide. We've got five key areas that we're focusing on to drive growth across differentiation, suppliers, inventory, e-commerce and customers. And I think holistically we're at a point where our sales have not been great over the COVID-19 period. You know, there's not, there's been clo mass closures of manufacturing sites. We haven't seen that customer demand for components. However, what we've seen is um, significant growth year, year over year in my business, in the Singapore computing business, which, is, which shows us what people want is additional computing power in the home to either support education needs for their family, to work from home, um, to finally get to their project that they've always been wanting to do because they've got more time at home to build, they can use a Raspberry Pi or a similar single book computer to build a media center, for example, to do any kind of home automation project. Um, so we've seen double, triple growth in uh, our SBC area year over year. So that's been a highlight for me. Um, oops, sorry. So just two minutes on Raspberry Pi. Um, this is what a Raspberry Pi looks like. It's a single board computer with various connections and uh, memory and processor. Um, we've shipped over 16 million units globally since 2012. We stock loads of accessories. Um, we've recently launched the Raspberry Pi 4 which is the most successful product yet. And um, it's, it's what Farnell are known for with a Raspberry Pi manufacturer and distributor. And just very quickly on Microbit. Microbit is a low cost, small programmable um, computer, which is ideal for children to learn coding in the classroom. And it's low cost. I mean, you can buy one for about £12. It's very cheap. And this is also a product that we have licensed to manufacture and distribute. It's a BBC branded product. And uh, we've been with the Microbit Foundation since the start. And we, we began uh, uh, distributing their products in 2015. Um, so far, we've manufactured and delivered over 5 million units not only to resellers, but directly to education systems. We've done massive global government projects, uh, which I've been involved in, I can speak about later. Um, and this also has seen great growth over COVID-19, despite the fact that most of the educa education systems were closed. I think it's given parents the opportunity to spend more time with the kids to learn these types of coding and, and STEM subjects. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm glad to be here. I hope that's been useful, Kieran, to give a bit of an overview. Um, and I look forward to the panel discussion in a second. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, and of course it was useful and, and highly informative. So I mean, I, um, I, I, I actually, um, in my former role at the British Council, um, who um, are also um, a partner in the, the foundation yeah. uh, with regards to Microbit, uh, got involved in, uh, in the, role, well, the um, attempts to roll Microbit out in, uh, in China. So I, uh, I, I still remember a few years ago bringing one of the first Microbits to China in my, uh, in my pocket uh, when, um, when I visited the, uh, the London office and, you know, we were engaging extensively with, um, with, with, with government across China around uh, um, getting this uh, into schools. It's a fantastic um, product. And, um, and as you uh, quite um, astutely pointed out, particularly at this, uh, at, at this point in time where, um, where previously schools have been closed and uh, you know, it's been, a, um, I, I would expect, a real uh, asset for, for kids to get into 
computing into science, technology, and uh, and particularly coding, which is the uh, the essence of the uh, the product. So it was uh, nice to see uh, um, that your involvement actually um, through Farnell in in that product, which uh, I had no knowledge of until uh, quickly scanning your uh, your slides, which you sent over <laughs> prior to the uh, the presentation. Um, no, thank you very much, Sarah. And um, you know, um, as with uh, with all of our speakers today, um, Sean and uh, Plater as well, um, you will all have a chance to uh, to engage, um, you know, more deeply in with um, uh, the work that they are doing. Um, I haven't seen too many questions yet pop up in the uh, in the Q and A box at the bottom of the screen. into the Q&A box and um, you know we will uh, we will address them now within uh, the, the Q&A um, so um, so feel free to, um, to to put some questions into the box in the meantime um, I will uh, I will kick off and uh, and put a few questions to uh, to our panelists um, I mean we've um, we, we we've seen already through uh, the the presentations to date that uh, uh, there is Leeds is a strong base for uh, for, for, for UK tech businesses, um, both uh, indigenous um, from within the UK and also uh, in, uh, invested into from, uh, from from China. So so it's great to have that um, that composition, and that perhaps sets up my my first two questions. Um, you know, firstly um, to to Dafa um, and to Sean uh, specifically. Um, We'd, I'd actually, um, and I'm sure uh, and, um, everyone else on this call would be very interested to learn about your experience and, uh, you know, your, your growth journey uh, within uh, the UK um, market. You know, it, would it be possible to tell us more about your, uh, your journey, your experiences to date, um, and, um, and just generally, uh, you know, how you've gone about building this incredible growth that, uh, you know, your business is seeing in the UK? Yeah, absolutely, uh, Kira. Like I say, we started to serve the UK and Irish market <coughs> since 2007. And in 2015, we, uh, we sort of uh, established the That Way UK office. Oh, are you okay, sir? Yes, I'm fine. No, please carry on. It's not you. Okay. So, um, I, I, I've just had the flu for a few days. So, um, okay, so okay. yeah, that's fine. Excuse me. I hope I was on mute and not coughing. Yeah, yeah, you're. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, two, please carry Yep, like I say, in 2015, we only started the business with two staff in Maidenhead, and now we have got more than 70 employees and with more than half local staff. We're very, very proud of this, and thanks for our team and our partners' uh, continuous effort to provide excellent service to the market. Looking ahead, we will try to keep the increase and provide even better service to the market. And what we're trying to do is make sure we establish the Dattler brand localized, established as a local company. Thank you, Sean. And, and just um, out of curiosity, why Leeds and why, why, the, north of, uh, why the north of England? What, what drove the strategy for Daha to, uh, um, to, to, to make... Uh, your, your investment in the region? Right, obviously, uh, the lease office established back into 2018 to cover the north part of England. Uh, the lease office is aimed to provide a better support to our local partners. Obviously, Manchester uh, area is quite CCTV centric. The reason we're choosing Leeds as our secondary office, first, because obviously the grid location and well connected to London, just off the M1, and major cities, like what I have mentioned, Manchester, Sheffield, Liverpool, and great support from the Leeds region. We built the relationship with Leeds even before we established the UK office, and thanks for the effort from Leeds City region to help us from the ground selecting the office in basically what we're based in Wet Rose uh, Centre introduce opportunity to set up connections. Currently, we're looking the option uh, to expand our office within the Leeds area, as what I've mentioned already as well. Oh. 
that, sorry, I was on mute there. Thank you very much, Sean. It's uh, it's it's, uh, it's great to hear that uh, you know that story and your rationale for uh, for, for why you chose uh, Leeds and and uh, all of those uh, those reasons very much play to the strengths. And I'm sure David and and, and the team will be delighted to uh, to hear that the support that they've uh, provided to Daha has been uh, um, a, a, an asset to your uh, to your growth strategy. Thank you. Um, I'm now going to um, turn to uh, Sarah and uh, and Huaycha and um, you know pose the question um, as businesses that are that are actually located in Leeds and, and um, headquartered in Leeds um, city region, I should say. Um, you know, it'd be great to understand a bit more about you know how you've gone about um, building partnerships uh, internationally and growing from your base um, in Leeds City Region beyond borders to becoming uh, truly global businesses and having truly global um, impact through your products. So who would like to oh, who would like to go first? Would, would, would you like to go, Sarah? I'll do, yeah. Um, I think my my role at Farnell has been slightly different over the years. So I actually manage the manufacturing and demand planning division of Farnell before my current role. Um, so I was very actively involved in our, with our China offices and our manufacturing offices in Shenzhen. Um, Farnell as a whole, I've always had a sales uh, base in Hong Kong and Shenzhen and multiple other offices across China all under our Element 14 brand. Um, and the manufacturing and design services element of Farnell was acquired around 10 years ago. Um, they were called MBEST Manufacturing Services, uh, but they're now, since we got acquired by Avnet, it's a very complicated history, but since we got acquired by Avnet, MBEST Manufacturing Services are now the Avnet Wide Design and Manufacturing Services uh, Division. So across those divisions, as I said earlier in my intro, um, we manufacture both Raspberry Pi and Microbit. Um, and we export them globally from China to our regional distribution centers. Um, and this is a, a key differentiator for us when we've been um, taking on products that we're going to license and manuf uh, manufacture under license because having partners in both uh, China and the UK meant and having a dual manufacturing strategy really meant that we can um, kind of safeguard our supply chain for our customers. So we've got two different manufacturers making the same thing basically. Um, and it, it's meant that, you know, if we've got a component issue in China, we can use our, our UK uh, manufacturing partner to kind of increase production and make sure we don't go out of stock for our customers and, you know, and such like. Um, so manufacturing services across Avnet are, are really starting to develop now. And there's, there's a, we offer an ecosystem of different services for our customers um, and manufacturing services is just kind of one of those. Um, and um, we've got customers all over the world that, that we uh, work with uh, as Avnet and um, they develop various different um, platforms or solutions uh, for any type of uh, customer need, uh, mainly derivative of hardware and then software associated. Um, so yeah, I think for me, that's, that's kind of what Farnell deliver. Um, and for my particular product area, um, Asia, Asia pack sales that, um, of Singapore computers represents, uh, 45% of our total business. Uh, so even though we're a headquartered um, in the in Leeds, um, got a global company business. Um, Asia is the biggest proportion of our sales, um, believe it or not, um, and they're principally in China uh, through our reseller channel. So, very interesting uh, question, and I'll hand over to Uchi now. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uchi. 
Yeah, uh, I think I'm going to start to talk more uh, about Leeds and move on to our international operation. Because we, I think we've been, we, we're based in Leeds, headquarters here, started 23 years ago. From a very little kind of company on the road until now, we have our uh, big office. And it's just the, the vision our, our CEO has. He, he was born in Leeds, grew up in Leeds. He wants to he, he wants to give it back to the community. So uh, it's the healthcare we do as well. He wants to bring this not to this community, to the UK and, and to the world. And it, it also, we, we, you know, like our, all our staff leave kind of certain area in Leeds because the, the, the things that we do, uh, we need to run 24, 24 7, 365 you know, days, days a year. And um, so we kind of all live near in this community and contribute to these. And, and also we, we, because of our, the growth of our business, we, we, we are doing continuous recruitment. So if any, anyone watching our, you know, like this, um, they, they want to apply they are they feel free to contact us. And because we, we, we still doing recruitment, we have uh, people coming to our, our, of course, follow the rules, social distancing rules. And we would like to kind of uh, educate our next generation. And we would like to uh, give this passes on to next generation, want them to help with the healthcare in the world as well. And we, we started our international business six years, six years ago. And I think it was uh, via a trade mission organized by Department of International Trade. Um, with our former Prime, uh, Prime Minister David Cameron, we went to, I think the first one, we went to China and India, and we really, we, we really enjoyed it. And we then we started to explore uh, opportunities there. And so we then, we then sent out a, a, a big team to China and started doing research and started to talk to local government. And we had lots of help from CBBC. We had the lots of help from local Chinese government as well. Our headquarters in China is actually uh, based in Hangzhou. Uh, the reason was that was the first city we went and we had a lo our CBBC in Hangzhou and local government help us with this tax legal thing and helping us to find the right partner there. And uh, of course, there are lots of tech companies in Hangzhou as well. And we kind of get help from both British and, and Chinese, Chinese government. And that's how we started. And also, I think the same thing is the, the model we share in terms of healthcare. We share the same vision. We all want to save the, we all want to save taxpayers money. We want to put the resources into primary care instead of people just go to secondary secondary care and we want to have a cost effective healthcare in the long run and that's how we actually started our business in china for the first two years we we didn't really start any commercial activities because for us the the most important things is to understand the market because you can see although we share the same vision it's still very different kind of model. Here, you, you we have a referral system, you go to GP and then you are referred to secondary care, and then your episode of care then come back to GP. In China, actually, if you want, you can go to hospital straight away. And um, they have good uh, insurance system there, but it's still run kind of differently across province between different cities. They have private care as well, that's what uh, lots of people go to diaspora, they go to, so, and they got traditional Chinese TCM as well in there, uh, along with the Western medicine. So we kind of need to all understand that, build that into our, into our system. And we then started, then we then started our really first um, commercial deal actually in Zhejiang province, in Hangzhou province. Again, it's actually through the, it's just through the DIT's uh, help as well. So we kind of had a, um, a project in Nanjing and in Ningbo in the district to do a showcase to the government. And that was, um, so that was working with the UK government and Chinese government to show a district of a public, uh, it's kind of primary care, but it's, it's kind of secondary care uh, 
here as well. And we were working on those regions. And now, um, so now we are active in several provinces. And now I just want to say we are working in Chongqing. It's the second largest city by population, I think after Tokyo, and working with local community, uh, community health center and, and to demonstrate a centralized EMR solution to the city. So that's kind of overview of what we are doing in, in China. But we are also, now we're talking to like Malaysian government, Southeast Asia government, and want to talk, uh, do a more national EMR project. So we are active in several regions uh, with, um, with the Department of International Trade Health. Excellent. No, thank you very much, Wei Chi. And um, <clears throat> that's a, a very comprehensive uh, review of your journey to, uh, to penetrate the China market. I mean, I, I'm, I'm delighted that you, know, you feel that CBBC uh, were able to provide you with uh, valuable support in addition to what you receive from government and the backing also from, uh, from, from the lead city region. So thank you very much for, for giving us all a big up and, uh, and, and I'm delighted that we were able to, uh, to, to enhance your, uh, your, your, your journey to market. Um, We've had some questions coming in, so um, so, so that's, uh, that's great. I can also see that um, Sarah, you've been quite proactive in answering them, so, uh, so that's, that, that's, that's also great. So um, I would just like to, um, to perhaps build off um, Hui Chi's um, comments around um, support and you know, the, the, the journey to market being through the, the David Cameron trade mission and position a question to Sean, which has come in from, uh, from Will Zhuang. Um, uh, Will has, um, ha, um, wishes to ask, um, where exactly did um, Dawa um, obtain uh, intelligence um, and information on leads before you chose leads uh, to make your investment? Was it through a delegation? Was it through an official visit? Or was it um, connections between uh, um, the, 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 with the city from uh, individuals within, within the business. Um, it would actually be quite interesting to, 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 to know about that if indeed you, uh, you are able to, uh, to give some context. Sorry, I didn't quite catch it. Do you mind repeat the question again, please, Kieran? Yeah, sorry, yeah sure. So, sorry, Sean. I asked it in a very, very long-winded um, way. So I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, uh, rephrase and say that, um, uh, that there's a question whereby, you know, how did Dahua get information about leads before making the investment? Was it um, through an official visit? Was it through uh, uh, people to people, uh, or sorry, personnel to personnel links? Or, uh, um, you know, what, what were the, the drivers? Right, obviously, like what I have mentioned before, uh, Leeds is a great city with great locations, and it's a well known city, should I say, back into China. And that was head office is also based in Hangzhou. Uh, I think Hui Chen has mentioned about the uh, mention about that as well. I think Hangzhou City uh, has always had the sort of a mutual connection with Leeds City, and that's what I've been taught and what I'd like uh, let to believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, no, of course, yeah. And also, when the previous governors from Leeds and Mayors went to China, I think the city they visited that was Hangzhou. So they set up the sort of a sisters, uh, the relationship between Hangzhou and the Leeds as sis, uh, sister cities. And I believe uh, our CEO, our chairman, Mr. Fu, uh, took in place uh, in terms of introduce uh, technology to you know some of the visitors from Leeds as a point I think the long sort of a relationship start or began from that point and since that we, we, we just keep developed and hence why obviously on the plus the rest of it I have mentioned before obviously the location the finance uh, you know, all the rest of the bits, and that's why we, we, where we are with 
we're at where right. we're at at this moment. Thank you, Sean. Um, I'm just going to move to a more general question and um, uh, from an anonymous attendee. Um, so um, re just really generally regarding the, the Leeds tech scene and perhaps we can broaden it to the Leeds city region uh, tech scene and business community. Um, how um, across your businesses, um, Sean, Sarah and Wei Chi, do your um, headquarters um, and, um, and, and key personnel view the Leeds um, city region tech scene. Um, I know, Sarah, you've um, answered this within the, the, the chat to, to say, you know, as, as very progressive, which, uh, which is great. And I think is evidenced by the fact that, you know, we have uh, today's event being put on and, you know, it's a key staple in the calendar of the Leeds city region. But um, yeah, it'd be interested to, to get perspectives from your businesses on, uh, on, on the tech scene across the region. Um, and where, where should we go first? Perhaps, uh, Wei Chi, would you like to, uh, would you like to go first? Right. Uh, I think, I think in Leeds, we, we do like, do lots of activities in terms of a uh, digital theme, because I think earlier this week, I, I just attended one, one on uh, women in tech. And we had a, a councils uh, helping and all the organizers helping as well. So I think in overall, Leeds is a kind of very dynamic city. And to, um, I think it's very welcoming for like any tech, uh, digital tech activities. So in, in that, I think we, we, are, well, we are quite advantageous to, to be located here. Um, and in terms of, uh, because I think because we are health, healthcare company, in terms of healthcare, we do have, we're very really lucky we kind of have NHS office in Leeds as well. We got other actually competitors or partners, they are also located in Leeds. So we actually have a really great opportunity to, um, to kind of work with them here locally. And even for this um, pandemic, for this pandemic, we have been, you know, doing absolutely everything we can to help with this situation. And we are lucky because where we are in Leeds, we can be very efficiently then have a communication with the, like, of, of course we can do it via Zoom, but we, um, we, I think we are lucky to be able to bring the team all together here, working, uh, working to kind of launch our new app. And made time in response to this pandemic. So yeah, I think that's that's I think that's in terms yeah. of that leads is kind of a good theme for, for this kind this digital thing and Great. yeah dynamic. Um, and I think for in terms of universities as well, like because we, we work with universities and we provide our system for kind of want to empower students when they come into their, their career, they can be ready for it. So we kind of like we offer scholarship to students, we uh, give our system for students to use. I think that also contribute to the community to um, being digital, to be familiar with that and to be ready for, for the career. Thank you. Sarah, um, you um... <clears throat> I'm not on mute. That's okay. And um, you, you, uh, you, you answered the question in in the in the chat. Um, although you know, I mean, feel free to to offer um, you know further perspective on uh, on your answer if, should you wish to. Um, just from my perspective, I think Leeds is very progressive in technology. Um, part of a number of different networking groups, women in technology, with women leadership groups um, from a. I'm a technology company myself it's, it's headquartered in Leeds um, and I think Leeds as a community offers a vast amount of support for people who want to get into technology to learn different types of technology um, and um, yeah I don't think I can add anything else but I, I'm glad to be part of the Leeds city and Leeds culture um, so yeah. Thank you. Um, just, um, I, I can see that we're quite short on time, um, but there's one more question or two questions here within the, the box, perhaps uh, to, to Julie, 
uh, to Julie um, Bagat's question about uh, opportunities for students in the uh, in sector. Um, all of you, what, what tips would you give to students, you know, with regards to sh sharpening up their skills and identifying appropriate companies and roles in areas that have been less impacted by COVID? And, you know, I mean, perhaps uh, speak specifically to within uh, the tech sector, um, if, if, if that's more comfortable. It's a uh, general question. So um, perhaps uh, let, let, let's see if we can answer it from a from a, from, from a tech perspective. Um, uh, who would like to go first? Um, I, James, or you're shaking your head. So I, so I, I was that- Not James or Sean. Sorry, Jack. Uh, sorry, not James, I'm Sean. Sorry, Sean. Um, I've got James written on the screen, which is uh, uh, reinforcing that you're called James when you're not. Sorry, Sean, please um, go ahead. Oh, right. Okay. So for ourselves, uh, you know, we are a tech, right, we class ourselves as an IT technology driven company and our motor for specialized, the UK team is driving AIoT, uh, drive to the AIoT future, drive to the AI, new AIoT world. So for ourselves, uh, AI will be one of the very, very uh, vital technology for ourselves, so obviously, uh, anything more or less, we, you know, any suggestion to the students, obviously within that territory, uh, anything artificial intelligence, and obviously, uh, internet of things, web-based, obviously COVID has changed, not just economy-wise, and also how we socialize, how we're living at this moment, for sure. So many sort of offline activities have been moved online. For instance, they say we are using Zoom meeting instead face-to-face. Yeah. -face. So I would have definitely probably, if any advice from myself, I probably would say in that territory, technology-based. And also additionally, you know, as a, as a company, we proactively looking for good candidates, not anything specific but a good all round okay so we have got few internships are going at this moment we've got the lady uh, just joined ourselves a months ago and she came from the lazy university uh, which she have done really really well for us so really it's it's a self-development and not module driven but make yourself available at the right time, be a good all-rounder. It's probably going to be my suggestion. Thanks, James. And and I think that also kind of links well to Jeremy's question as well around uh, you know key skills needed for digital sector employees across the region. And uh, you know, Sarah, you uh, you gave a, a, a an answer in the group, which I think uh, summarizes things uh, very well as well around you know having a good awareness of technology. Um, keeping an eye on trends um, and, um, you know, in, in terms of the technical aspects, I mean, uh, perhaps uh, not so much uh, necessary. But, I mean, do you want to offer any further comment to, uh, to, to your answer there to, to Jeremy, uh, which can also um, address Julie's question on behalf of her students at the University of Huddersfield? Yeah, I can do. I think, <clears throat> I think more so than ever now, there's, we've got an opportunity to for students to learn about the technology to understand the technology at university and have that kind of the ground level base work done but then what we need for the young people of the, of, of the people that are coming out of university is is how to harness that te technology to solve real world problems um if you, if you think about the things that are on the agenda at the moment such as sustainable development such as COVID-19, such as um, Black Lives Matter, um, such as climate change. You know, there's some massive things happening right now uh, and we're quite pivotable in a multiple different uh, uh, things today. And how we can harness technology and harness AI and harness machine learning to solve some of these problems or help people solve some other problems. 
Um, I think that's a, the biggest opportunity that I'd encourage any kind of student to, to be thinking about um, and learn about to, to kind of apply their knowledge at university to solve some of these, um, some of the serious problems that the world's facing today. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for, for, for further elaborating. Um, I am conscious of time and therefore feel it's, uh, it's probably in the interest of our, of our audience who have uh, been extremely committed throughout the course of today, staying online right to the end um, um, to, uh, to, 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 to end today's session. Um, I'd like to um, thank all of you for, uh, for, for, for joining um, as participants today and particularly um, to our panelists for, for taking time out of your days in order to, um, in order to contribute to this panel. Uh, just to reinforce that last point to, to Julie, um, I, th I think uh, all of your students, and I'm sure all of the, the, the companies represented today um, from, from Daha, uh, Daha, Farnell, and TPP would be delighted to hear more from, uh, from your students, and I'm sure they'd be very willing to engage around uh, opportunities um, as well within their, within their companies to, uh, to the talented uh, people that you uh, teach on a, on a daily basis. Um, okay, well, we've reached the end of um, this particular session. Um, I'd like to, again, thank all of you for, uh, for, for taking the time out. And um, I don't know whether David is online. Yes, he is. Yeah. Sorry, David. You were hidden by my um, text box here with questions, so I'm just going to move that to the side, and I should perhaps uh, hand back to you to uh, to conclude this um, session today. Yes, thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Kieran, and thank you to our panelists for the, the second panel session. They're very informative and really useful. I think the one, the one thing that stands out is it's all about partnerships, and what's been really uh, good to see throughout this event is that we have various partnerships on a spectrum of people that are just learning about the region and, and new to the region like Dahua, right to the, the very end where we've got real well-meaning, productive, established relationships with organisations like Farnell and, and TPP. You know, Farnell have recently built the biggest distribution warehouse in our region on the Enterprise Zone that we ploughed a lot of money into Frank Hester and TPP with the proximity to the NHS have always been flourishing in, in the little cluster there in, in Horsforth that we have with EMIS as well on the medical records and Dahua. We've got a fabulous relationship that's developing. I'm pleased to hear they're expanding. And that's not just through a sequence of prolonged and sustained civic relationships which have been going on. Uh, and this links in with my final point of a, a thank you, but to the many officers in my team, in the local authorities that work behind the scenes, such as Jenny Holstock, Sonia Beebe, and, and Karen Murgatroyd, who does an, an amazing job for the international relationships, uh, especially between Leeds and, and China, and the other staff in, in local authorities who support us to develop relationships with China. I think ultimately it's those partnerships that allow us to talk about the really exciting things today. So I'll bring this session to an end. I hope people carry on enjoying more of the Leeds Digital Festival. Um, if, if you're new to, to my team and, and Karen's team, please feel free to get in touch and any exchanges between the participants and the businesses, we're, we're happy to broker. So thank you very much, everybody, and uh, stay safe. Thank you, David. Thank you, everyone. David. Thank you, thank you very much. Karen. Thank you. Bye. 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 Stay safe. Bye. Bye.